And remember, these were the people that were in charge of the National Intelligence Estimate, which many people thought had taken more off the agenda uh, that was released in 2007 that said uh, Iran had stopped its nuclear weapons program. I can talk more about this in the Q&A, but what, what is significant now is those three figures who are very closely associated with that have all come out and said they think that Iran is trying to get, they personally think Iran is trying to get nuclear weapons. So that tells you something about the NIE and also um, where they're at on, on this. Um, and uh, again, there's no proof that Iran is, is doing this, uh, that it has a weapons program. And, and uh, you know, as Elaine pointed out in her, her article, uh, it is official US doctrine that they have the right to use preemptive war, including with nuclear weapons, to destroy weapons of mass destruction, particularly nuclear weapons. So this charge is actually a justification for war. In, in and of itself. Iran is committed to destroying Israel. This is another thing that's somewhat different than the run-up to the Iraq war, not that Israel wasn't involved, but there's a whole argument that Ahmadinejad is Hitler and uh, they're using a mistranslated quote to, to claim that Iran is hell-bent on destroying Israel with nuclear weapons. We heard what Hillary Clinton said. Uh, you know, here's a country that actually, Iran hasn't attacked anyone, does not have nuclear weapons, and is being surrounded militarily and threatened by countries that do have nuclear weapons, and, had, and in the case of the United, and I'm speaking of Israel and the U.S., and in the case of the U.S., it's actually used them, and has a doctrine to use them. And it's and then he'll you know and then and then it's the Iran are the madmen that are threatening aggression and nuclear war on the world. Um, Iran is preventing peace in Palestine by its support for Hamas, waging a proxy war, the leading regional threat in Lebanon and Afghanistan. Uh, again, one of the things that the uh, U.S. rulers are saying, which has definite elements of truth is the regional picture is tilting in ways that they do not find favorable. Whether various specific charges of Syria or Iran or this, that, or the other thing are in and of themselves true, Iran's political influence has grown. The anger at the US and Israel has deepened. It's taken the form of Islamic fundamentalism in many cases. This is a big obstacle to them because let's not forget what they want to do is crush the masses of people, defeat this trend, and deeply restructure this region. That's what the U.S. agenda is. This is unconditional surrender is what they're demanding. You know, not some kind of a tit-for-tat negotiation with their adversaries. So in that context, it is a big problem for them, the way things are developing in the region. Uh, there's also a global dimension to this, in which there's a particular, which isn't talked about much, but Iran, the foreign minister of Iran is in Pakistan, they're doing a pipeline deal, there's a lot of contention around, uh, you know, the, the shape of Central Asia and the relation of the Soviet Union to that, um, I'm sorry, Russia to that, India's relations. So there's a way in which Iran can be a global player in a way that Iraq, for example, could not, which also is, is, is a problem for the U.S. because this whole agenda in the, in the Middle East is ultimately a global agenda. That's, it's very much connected with that. Uh, and then we've had these incidents uh, in the Persian Gulf in which it's charged that Iran is impeding shipping and this is not simply, I mean, this is a, can be a pretext for war on a couple of levels. One, it can be an immediate trigger, but uh, I've been read, you know, this guy, Walter Russell Mead, I don't know if people see him every now and then on the Lair News Hour. They have, he's one of these Council on Foreign Relations people. And he made a, he wrote an article in January, after the January incident. We reported on this in, the, in Revolution. There was a, 
uh, there was a claim that the U.S. and Iran were, the U.S. was about to fire on Iranian speedboats for supposedly acting in a provocative manner. And of course, the proof the U.S. came up with was largely fabricated. But this guy, Walter Russell Mead, wrote, wrote a column in the Wall Street Journal and said, um, you know, number one, uh, defending the freedom of shipping is a key element of the global economic and political order. The U.S. is the guarantor of that order, and that ability to guarantee that order is a key element of the U.S.'s status in the world. And that de defending the freedom of shipment is a legitimate reason for war, and Iran would be shocked at the level of a U.S. response. Now, I don't think this guy is saying that because he read an article in the Chronicle about this. This is somebody in the ruling class who's saying that. So I think this is very serious, and there was another incident a week or two ago, and actually, uh, I don't know if people saw this Andrew Coburn article that came out the other day, but he made this very chilling point that the U.S. was actually ready to fire on the Iranians, and then William Fallon, the head then of CENTCOM, intervened and gave a direct order not to fire. Okay. Fallon is gone now, fired for, for this among other things. And we can talk about this in the Q&A if people want to. Uh, apparently the White Party to Coburn, and I think he's probably right, the White House was furious. Well, if they, if they were furious, that tells you where they wanted this to go, or where they were ready to have it go. All right, let's look at some of the military preparations. Um, and again, knowing that much of this is secret. Um, you know, again, Elaine's article up on the web, um, you know, there have been changes in U.S. doctrine that create um, a force, I think it's called STRATCOM, which has the ability from the United States to launch strategic attacks within hours on any place in the world. So it's conceivable that if one of these scenarios of a massive retaliation, massive attack on Iran is carried out, it could be done from the US. There wouldn't necessarily even have to be a greater buildup than there is right now in the Gulf. We wouldn't have to see this months and months of troops moving over there and ships and the British and all this other stuff, you know. It could happen very quickly, theoretically. Um, so that's one thing that I think is, this is, is very important. But having said that, they've moved a second aircraft carrier into the region, the nuclear sub, and there are two, uh, I believe, uh, cruisers or destroyers off the coast of they Lebanon. They can fire missiles. Yeah. I'm sorry? They can fire missiles fire missiles, they're deemed essential to repel any Iranian counterattack. Uh, you know, Le Le Lebanese, uh, uh, Hezbollah rocket attacks on Israel and what have you. So they're in the Mediterranean, but they're connected to the Iran thing potentially. Um, you can look at, uh, you know, going back to the surge. I mean, look, here's Iran, let's not forget, since 2001, Iran has been gradually surrounded by military bases, including in Central Asia, build up a military bases in the Persian Gulf. The head of NATO was really, I thought this was quite significant, was recently in the Gulf as part of a Gulf cooperation effort, which is military planning. And he said that Iran posed a threat. Now, what's NATO doing in the Persian Gulf? You know, so there's that. Uh, going back to the surge, the whole surge had a big component of reconfiguring the political military constellation within Iraq to be directed at Iran. And you know, that continues, including in the form of these potentially, potentially, of these attacks against the Sadr forces that could, you know, in the event of an attack on Iran, there could, some of these forces maybe uh, would, would counterattack the United States. Again, I mean, this is speculation, but that, but, you know, before you attack somebody, you are gonna try to position things so that 
you don't get the blowback 